Hey Jules Bliss Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new I know you can benefit. So first before I even get started I really want to encourage you to exercise your right to vote. If you are in any of the 14 states tomorrow for Super Tuesday I pray that you'll get out there and you know voice your opinion on who should even contemplate running for president. Uh, if you're into that, I just think it's so important because democracy is rare. You know, there's dictatorships, there's wannabe dictators, dare I say. And, you know, my priest, who is actually a missionary to the United States, which just freaks me out because we've been missionaries so many times, but now they're having to send priests here to wake us up. And this guy is a missionary to the United States from like Nairobi, okay, like somewhere. Um, South Africa or somewhere, and he was saying that in his country, they literally kill to get into office, meaning they actually slaughter the individual who's in the role um, and take over that position. Yeah, sit with that a second. <laughs> so if we can still vote, I mean, please, let's, let's exercise that right. And you still, if for some reason, cannot participate in the primaries, have, you know, eight months to get your head around the actual election, but you should do it. All right. So that's my little plug for the importance of voting. And that's because, hello, you can imagine that I am a political wizard who has served in office. So <laughs> don't get me started on the importance of that. Then we are in the middle of our random acts of kindness for the 45 days before Easter during Lent. And today you are supposed to simply say sorry in real time. And I hate to admit it, but I had several opportunities to say sorry in real time. I don't know if people were super sensitive or if I was over assertive, but whatever the case was, I absolutely apologized in real time. So for tomorrow, and again, if for some reason you can't do these in the actual day, just know and have it in the back of your head that it's a good opportunity to do it sometime. So tomorrow it's donate your change, you know, whatever that looks like. If, if somebody around you is at a vending machine for some reason and you can see they need a quarter, if somebody's in line in the grocery store and you can see that they're, you know, desperately searching for that tip, tax, wherever you are, if those little containers are out, if your little kid needs a couple of pennies for school because they've got a fundraiser, whatever it is, go into your change and consider donating it. You see a peddler on the street, give them that change. It adds up. I'm not always comfortable giving like a five or a 10. I don't even know what my life is going to ask of me, but I often pour out my entire change portion of my wallet. And sometimes it exceeds the amount that I wasn't even going to give. And I'm like, you know what? Right on. Take it. Just take it. Because seriously, people, whatever you give from your heart, you will receive tenfold. You really will take the risk. So that's tomorrow is to give your change. And I remember we were doing this um, during Advent. And one of them was that you'd like tape a dollar bill to a vending machine and I wasn't comfortable with that and I was quite certain that people would attempt to return that dollar you know um, but one thing that I read which was very cool was to simply insert nickels dimes and quarters in the machine already so that when a person goes to purchase something and they suddenly only need to put in a dime and their dollar 25 item comes out they feel like they won the lottery right i mean it's so exciting or sometimes when people go by machines they just automatically push the refund button and to have change actually come out feels like christmas in march so might you consider that donate your change be magical and put your change in a machine if you're near one Donate your little change on the counter at all of those stores that have the little things for the homeless, for cancer. There's so many. Give change to a kid. Sometimes, like for me, they're always selling stuff, right? Girl Scout cookies, um, world's finest chocolate, like all these things. And as I've been getting well, I've actually had the grace to say, you know what? Here's a couple bucks. At church, oh, God, every single weekend, they have something going on for a different group. And I have the courage to just say, you know what? I don't want your product. 
You're welcome to eat it yourself. You're welcome to give it to someone. But I just want to give you a couple of dollars. Man, people love that. So consider that. It's relatively painless when it's just your change. Though, I think I've told you, I know the value of change and I know how it adds up. And how one time I filled up a plastic Pepsi bottle and actually paid my rent for $600 and had $28 left for groceries. I know the value of change, but I also know the joy of it. And I suggest that you go for that one. All right, my friends, like if you like, join us if you haven't. Subscribe. I know, you're like, you're kidding. You don't have a talk. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I wanted to share a couple of things, though I'm not giving a talk, and this is why. One, I had an outrageous day and I'm exhausted, but partly it's because our precious dog, Mercy, had her second surgery today for mastitis for her tummy, and her tummy looks amazing. Let's just say her bikini career will be intact by summer, but she has a 20-inch incision. And of course, she's whimpering and she needs support and I want to support her. So I'm so happy she's home. I'm so glad she survived the surgery. I'm so incredibly grateful to my family that uh, paid for that surgery on her behalf, which completely eased me and my husband this month for all of the things that we need to do and that we give to. And so I'm rejoicing to know in for the universe to care for us. So I need to care for mercy. Another weird thing, as I am out of breath, mostly because of my asthma acting up, another thing was that, you know, I've been stressed out over my nephew Dean, even though I'm trusting God and trusting the process, I know that he's still very vulnerable and I never know if I'm going to get a phone call uh, saying that he's turned for the worst or heaven forbid died. And then here was my dog going through surgery for the second time, which she just had the other half done a month ago. And I didn't know what phone call I might get from her. And then I was at school and the office called and said, hey, you have a surprise in the office. Can you send someone? And I said, are they flowers? And they were like, yeah, and they're amazing. And it's like a huge thing of flowers. You're so lucky. And so I said, oh my gosh, let me send some kids to get it. And I was really thinking it's probably for my husband. Uh, he knows that I was struggling last night and He's such a blessing. Even though I have asthma, I can handle real flowers briefly. If they start to spawn or anything, or if I'm in a closed room, I'm in trouble. But I really do appreciate them. And they were a huge part of our marriage in the early years before my asthma got worse. So I'm like, cool, you know, how exciting. Can't wait. So the girls bring it. It is gigantic, like two and a half feet. And I immediately zoom in and just go, oh my gosh, did someone die is my first thought, which is so interesting. Like what? But they were death flowers in my mind. They were white roses. They were white, um, not lilies. And then another white one. And the whole thing looked like a huge thing of peace be with you and someone's dead. So my kids were like, Miss McCants, what's the matter? Oh my gosh, are you excited? They're so beautiful. And I said, oh my gosh, ah, of course I'm excited, but I'm afraid that someone died. Let me see the card. And I open the card and right away it says, sympathy, so sorry for your loss. I'm not kidding you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, did Mercy die? Did Dean die? Like, what? <sighs> so in the middle of class, I get on the phone to my husband and I'm like, who died, honey? you know, did you send me flowers? And he's like, yes, I sent you flowers, but no one died. What are you talking about? And I'm like, I just got your flowers and it's a sympathy card. Can you believe it? Is it called FTD? <laughs> Somehow in a very sick joke from the universe, that florist confused my happy flowers, which I haven't even seen yet. I'll see them tomorrow because I had to hurry up and leave and get my dog with flowers for someone who was in mourning. Can you believe that? So my husband immediately got on the phone. He's like, are you kidding me? And you don't know what my wife's going through and forget it. I'm canceling. They wouldn't let him cancel. They wouldn't let him have his money back. Nothing. Um, they just assured us that they would come pick those flowers up from my office at the school and uh, bring the right ones. And 
My husband actually called the number on the card thinking it would be the florist and it was like the family of the people in mourning. It just got worse by the second. And my husband was devastated because he only wanted to honor me and it turned out to just be like this whole trauma thing. So <laughs> that was an unexpected uh, nightmare, let's just say. And of course, I was praying my head off for the family that actually lost someone and on and on. So what was supposed to be just a joyful moment uh, turned out to be pretty desperate. But I did go from there to get my dog. And even though uh, she's certainly defrosting, she's in pain, she's more awake than we expected. She's got a little hood on. I got another really cute um, tie-dye shirt for her. And she's going to be okay. But I will be nursing her as much as I need to and taking care of myself because I'm tired but blessed. Tired but blessed. And so that's why I say like if you like, join us if you haven't, subscribe. Most importantly, know that I pray for you, that I count on your prayers, and until we talk again, know that you're blessed.